Underdog Podcast. It's your host, T. Lee, and my co-host, Jack Cowden, will be live today, as usual. Was pulling up, they acting like they couldn't see me. Now she want to clean me up like a squeegee. I told her that's on me, baby, like yellow BZ. With a peanut butter tear like a Reese. He's on personal bills through all the obstacles. Get it done. That's an underdog. They don't forget the underdog when they see me. I hit them with the John Cena, they can't see me. You may overlook this person, but the underdog is the one who's going to put in the word. It's over, you know? Because you have to lose to win, whether you think losing is a uh, big event. Out of mind. All I'm saying is be careful who you idolize. I'm kicking these scriptures just before the pain. Ain't no cap in my words, I go against the grain. So I always believe in life. I took so many risks to make this thing happen, you know what I mean? I'm always working, bro. Like, uh, I just, like I said, I'm energy driven. The underdog can put you on your ass. The underdog can put you on game. The underdog can show you something that you didn't know. You can't go down. All you can do is go up. So are you going to stay where you at or are you going to move up? We are the bangers. Put a bangers. <laughs> Yo, yo, what it do good people? Welcome back to the Underdog <laughs> Podcast. You know what I mean? We're back at it again, man. Season four is over, it is done, but this the underdog chronicles. You feel me? We got a special guest on today. You know, serial entrepreneur, artist, manager, promoter. She specializes in connecting the links to bring artists together for exposure and networking opportunities. We have New Jersey zone by way of Florida, Queen Airy in the building right now. What's going on, Queen? Hey, King. I'm doing good. It's an honor to have you on the platform today. Yes, I feel so honored to be here. So excited. Hey, we appreciate it. You know, you accepting the invite. You know, it's been a long time coming since we ran into each other, but you know, we here, we making it happen. Yeah. I know it's a whole lot going on, a whole lot of motion. So, uh, first and foremost, you know, as we like to push the importance of people knowing ourselves, you know, who is Queen Air as a person, like outside of everything you do. So Queen Airy is a fun, optimistic, spontaneous person um that works very hard and plays very hard she likes to have just basically good positive energy around um never i i don't like to dwell on the negative so if you're a negative person i just i try to make you positive um and just basically someone that is um growing into a very very um, positive influence for the world. That's what's up. You like to hear that. Nothing but positivity over here, you know. You know, it, it's it's simple, you know, when people say positive and negatives. If you just go to the principles, it's like, what's going to add value to me? And what's going to take from me, you know? Right. So it's like, which one you rather want? You know, I'm trying to build, so I want everything to gain, you know. Right. Uh so what are some lessons you learned in 2022 that helped you prepare for this year? Um, one is you can't rush the process. Another is um, everything happens for a reason. And sometimes even though you might not understand why it happened or, you know, the whole circumstances at that moment, still trust God because it all works together for your good. Mm -hmm. And that goes from, you know, relationships, business relationships, materialistic things. Mm -hmm. He gives and he takes, but don't ever question. Real talk. Because it be feeling like, you know, even though when you don't want to be going through it, you might be going through something, but it's what you make, what you make out of it, you know? Yes. Um, and sometimes that helps build you too. Most definitely, you know, you have when you go through things and make it easier for when you come across it again. You know, it's, it's lightweight. Um, that's all the part of growing. So as the year twenty twenty three is, you know, halfway through, uh, how this year been treating you thus far? It's been treating me very well. 
it's been treating me very well. I can um, honestly say I started some things at the end of last year and I see them um, flourishing already halfway through. Mm -hmm. um, I'm already connecting the dots and making plans for 2024. So I know even though this was my hump year, next year will be a very, very, um, it's going to be my takeoff pretty much. Yeah. Most definitely sound like you just plant the seeds and the seed you seeing the growth and everything, you know. So it's just like it's definitely it's nothing like seeing the crops when they they at their final stage, you know. And right. from where you first started that you like, man, it went from a seed to a whole flower, and now it's bringing life to it, you know. Yeah. And as so. long as you see that growth in anything that you do, and it's not at a standstill you know you're doing the right thing even if it might not be because i know i'm definitely not where um i want to be or even the projects that i have they're not my ultimate goals have not been fulfilled yet but i see you know slowly but surely they're getting there and i, I just thank god for connecting me with the people um with opening up doors of opportunity um like even with me and you at apex yeah so that was a blessing I, I didn't even know you guys were gonna be there but I'm yeah happy. we didn't <laughs> even know we was gonna be there either until it just it popped up yeah. <laughs> uh-huh but yeah this just one of them things too it's just like we had the idea it started from scratch and now you know we looking at the plant just bring life and new fruit to it now you know yeah. we're enjoying it right now and then Yes. Also enjoying these stories and connecting with people, you know, and giving them the the, the value, the the uh, how can I say, the proper recognition, you know, they fly because everybody deserves they fly. Everybody got a story to tell, from life stories to being on what you on right now, you know. So everything is important, you know, because mm -hmm. you know, everybody else, this for like, this for the culture, this for the whole, this what I say is for the culture, stuff like that, stuff that's gonna yeah. add on to bring people together. So. Mm -hmm. From New Jersey, but transitioning to Florida around the late nineties, like first, what was it like for you from your perspective growing up in New Jersey, like and to transition down south? Well, Jersey was of course more um city, a lot more things going on. Um when I moved here, I moved to a city called Titusville, Florida. Yeah. It's a small country town. Um I was very young at the time so i think it didn't affect me as much as it might have affected like my my sister because mm -hmm. she was older but um i'm glad my mom made the choice that she made because in the city you know i would have had to worry about so much when i right. was there, we didn't even have to worry about locking our door mm -hmm. you know what I mean? and like it was it just was um, I would say the best childhood that I, I could have had. Like we, our our thing was hanging outside, planning picnics, and yeah, you know what I'm saying, doing the riding our bicycles and going to the community pool, like different things like that. I didn't have to worry about um, like drugs being sold in front of me or you know fights, shootouts. Um, so even though I missed all, because all my family is from Jersey, of course I missed my cousins and stuff. Um, it was still i'm glad grateful that my mom brought us down and i still go back and forth as whenever i want so yeah that's a blessing too so speaking of that also too like for those who may have not visited like new jersey like when you make your way back home like where does queen areas go to spots to either hang out or just get something to eat well i'm from jersey city okay. um but to be honest, I hang out more in Manhattan than I do in Jersey. Yeah, so, Jersey ain't too far either from uh, New not, York. Yeah, it's, it's really, really not. That's what's up. So a lot of the times when I go there, um, I'm with family. But when we go out or, you know, when we hang out, we tend to go to Manhattan, the Strip, Times Square. Yeah. Yeah, the city that never sleeps. <laughs> Yeah, I can't even wait to get back though. I'm gonna go back in uh November. I probably went like two years ago, but yeah. What part? Uh me and my brother, we're gonna be in like Brooklyn, but then we're gonna be moving around, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the subway, that's a whole different like it's I ain't never been up north either. So coming like 
like up to that area where you just ride none but transportation to get somewhere like yeah I'm like man i wouldn't ride i wouldn't drive no car my car <laughs> I like them buses will be on. Yeah. Yeah, them buses yeah. will be on squished everything on me because it's like how the buses turn, they turn, but then they swing over. Yeah. Like, it's just different. Yeah, yeah. And then we don't have, you know, like our our roads, our streets, it's so much more compacted. So mm -hmm. it's not it's not the same. And we we basically um don't have the luxury of having like a whole lot of land with parking spaces and stuff. So it's best to, between the traffic and slim parking, it's best to take the summer. Yeah, get on that sub. <laughs> For real. Yeah. Uh so who or would you say molded you into the person you are today? Like who or what would you say molded you into the person you are? I think my mom and my grandmother have a lot of a lot of effect on how strong and independent of a woman that I am. Just watching them, you know, my mom had my dad, but she was, you know, she was a hard worker. My mom, yeah. um, you know, she always said never settle. She, you know, she installed us hard work. You know, you gotta work to eat. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that that had a lot of influence on me. Yeah, those principles and values, especially from like, you know, back in them days, like that's the stuff I carry on me and I'm trying to put on, you know, my kids and it's stuff like, yeah, because like it's going to be a point where it's going to be one of them times it's like, this existed before, stuff was really like this, like I'm getting a taste of that right now because, you know, you got social media is so much of a, it makes everything like a blur right now from back mm -hmm. in the day, like. Everybody, principles, morals, everything messed up with that, Different. you know. For real, even on the social level, in some some sense, you know. Yeah, because we always in our phones. We not, you know, like tuned into, um, you know, the cyber world reality. Mm -hmm. Not not reality around us. Um, and it, I think, it just comes with the the generations and the technology and things like that, but. At the end of the day, it is it's us that have to show them because yeah. if not, they're gonna grow up thinking that they're so entitled and they're yeah. not. You gotta yeah. work hard for everything that you have, and the harder you work for it, I think the more you appreciate it. Yeah, that come easy don't always last. Right now, nah, you and then you enjoy the process more too when you <laughs> actually you know work for something and actually went all the way with your plan. If it's something, it's always too fast. If it's something just like if money was to fall out of the sky, it'd be looking like, man, where did money came from? Like, it just, <laughs> it just ain't nothing regular, you feel me? Like, mm -hmm. you know. But um, so for you to also be a, a manager of artists, you know, and a promoter, like, has music always gave you inches early on? Like, it's been a big impact in your life? Yes, I love music, especially good music, and I feel like I have an ear for it. What what's good music to you? I want to say that too. You know what what catches your ear when you listen to an artist? I, I can't even say. Well, for one, the lyrics. Okay. The beat, okay. The beat in the lyrics. Sometimes even if you don't have the lyrics and you have um, a good beat and a nice hook, you can get by. Yeah. But Real good music should have a meaning or, you know, some type of substance to it. Something to take from it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel. Like, as an artist, like, even, like, I've been doing music for a while. So, it's like, I came up in the era where it was nothing but music I'm listening to substance from. Like, mm -hmm. when when the time period when New York had it, they had, New York had hip-hop in the chokehold. Right, right. You know, before the South got it. So it's like I'm listening to a little bit of everything, but I'm always getting something to take from it. So mm -hmm. in my artistry, to bring my originality, I call myself like I have a way with words. Even when I'm talking regular, sometimes just having a conversation, like I be finding myself so much into my artistry when I talk because I be talking. I got a way of instead of saying it like <laughs> right yeah like i'm i'm talking around it so much but it's like when you listen to what i'm saying like yeah i i, I know what's going on like yeah you know so in my music 
I don't I rarely use profanity in my music. Like, I be I used to feel like when I was a kid, like when I was younger, writing music, like if I had to do that, I'm cheating. cheating. You know, I'm cheating. Like if I do that, because you're you know, I'm like, I got other ways to say what I'm gonna say. Like right. instead of just saying that, like I can make a song right now. Uh we got I got a few a lot of songs where I ain't using no profanity. So what they do, they don't box me in. That mm-hmm. lets all ears be able to listen to be it. Be able to listen to it. You yeah. know, so like I yeah, it's a record I dropped with a with a uh, rapper from Atlanta and stuff like that, and the song called Woot Woot. But I'm saying so much in the song, but I'm not being direct with it. So if it go over here, but people are here, they're like, okay, I see what he's talking about. But mm-hmm. it ain't gonna catch like if a you know somebody else is listen to it, like somebody younger, so they be like, okay, man, I ain't saying nothing out the way. And let right. somebody break it down to them, you know. Sure. But people like is or without they gonna know. I see, yeah, I see what's going on. You mm-hmm. know? But uh, yeah, I always try to do that though. I like to let people peel the layers back on what I'm saying, you know. So that also be like, all right, let me go back and listen to it again. Listen what the man was just saying? Yeah. Did he just say that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so who would you say? Who would you say? Uh. We're like the most influential artists you would put in your top list and why? Um, as far as like already well known, just just on your personal time, like your favorite all time artist, it can be any genre. And I'm gonna only give you five slots, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be giving people too much room a little bit. So I got to say for like hip hop. Yeah. Um, I grew up listening to a lot of Rick Ross, a lot of, um, like, um, let me see. It was like a lot of Florida artists, to be honest, like Mm -hmm. all supplies. Yeah. um, as far as ladies, Mary J. Blige, okay. um, newer era like LMA. Um, you said I got five, so one more. Mm-hmm. Um, if I have to say gospel, Tasha Cobbs. So R and B, hip hop, and gospel. <laughs> so why? And then what make them artists stand out to you? Why? Why just them artists out of all the artists out here? What make that, them stand that, out? Yo, that make well, you connect. Um. I just, well, Mary, I grew up on her. I just love her music. I love yeah. her vibe. How she, how she make you feel. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Um, And then, like, I think, you know, with hip-hop, um, Rick Ross implies, like, I just, I don't, it don't matter what they say. I just think they come hard. They mm-hmm. come hard. Um. So it just was easy to listen to all their music, you know. Um, and then with gospel, Tasha, I feel like she speaks to my soul. <laughs> like, yeah, she really, um, she's really, really um, anointed. Nah, that's most definitely, you know. Like, you gotta have that music, you know that that keep you like that relaxed or in the mind for like with so much going on and mm-hmm. like you got to take a break and just you know kind of like meditate you know in a sense so that type of music definitely gonna do it you know yeah yep it's, it brings me peace mm-hmm. so let's talk about the artist you manage as well karma the goddess like how did that relationship come about so me and karma ended up at an airbnb party together yeah um we were in a we we were in a pool well we i knew her from different events like i had met her during during different events because um she used to do she had like she sells merch like um Mm -hmm. from clothes to like socks and different all different kind of stuff but um we wind up having a Airbnb party with all the vendors and she was there and we were just hanging out because usually we're working and she started rapping. And I was like, you rap? Like, I, I mean, she was snapping and I was like, girl, 
I never knew you rap. Like I knew you for almost a year and I never knew you rap. And she was like, cause I just do it for fun. I, you know, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. So, um, I kept that in my mind. And even though, um, I hadn't talked to her in like over a year last year when I started the show called Cypher City. Yeah. I, um, I was like, I got to hit karma up because karma can spit bars like nobody else. Like I, I hadn't heard a female rapper and you know, she from Michigan originally. So she yeah. don't, she, she's different from the Florida rappers. Like her lyrics have meaning. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm starting this show. I need you on it. And she was like, Oh, okay. I'm so excited. Yeah. And then, um, that's where it all started from. I, um, picked her up that day and we went to Polk County to do our first episode of Cypher City and she killed it. And I, I didn't even know, like she had not been doing shows and all that until recently a year and she's doing great now. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. hasn't even been doing it for over a year, about nine months. Oh uh, yeah, that's what's up for real. Shout out to Carmen the Goddess, you know, sound like a lit experience, you know what I mean? Just yeah, you know, all she needed was to get the opportunity to get in front of people and to just go in. Yep. So also, you know, being a manager, like break it down for the artist too. Like, what's the role of a manager? You know. So I feel like my role is to help the artist with, with anything they need help with, mm -hmm. whether it's um artist development, yeah. shows, um, writing songs, making sure they're produced properly to, um, I try to encourage all my artists to get a brand, mm -hmm. um, because as an artist, you can develop like seven streams of income. And mm -hmm. if you have at least a thousand fans mm -hmm. that will spend a hundred dollars throughout the year with you. Mm -hmm. That's a hundred thousand dollars. Um, and it's not hard to do, especially if you have merch yeah. or you're doing shows, you know what I'm saying? So I basically help them fill in the gaps, but I try to help artists that don't mind investing and helping themselves because some people think that a manager is supposed to just come right. and they're supposed to do everything. Yeah. And that's not how it goes. We adjust the gap for where you need help. You got to still work too. Yeah. So I help with, you know, the shows, the booking, um, booking and promotion, branding, artist development, um, studio time. Like if you need help with getting studios or contacting people for features, mm -hmm. um, then we look into, you know, where your music is being streamed to try to get you shows so you can go fulfill it. Like if you got, over 30,000 people listening to you in UK, I'm going to be contacting UK to see if I can get you in London to perform. You know, it's just, real. that's, that's just how it goes. No, that's real. But and it, it starts with the artist. It starts with the artist. You got to have the passion. Yeah. The, yeah. The motivation and drive yourself. I, nobody can't do that for you. Yeah, for real. So, um, and it's also, I like how you said you can and all that because the artists, you know, it's listeners all around the world. You can't just look at the United, the market of the United States. No. You know, it, it's, it's a lot of people out here. You feel me? Yeah. So it's like you can't just limit yourself to like, uh, well, you're going to have your core fan, whatever, but you can't just be like, all right, if this person don't like this, it's a lot of people that out here that's, that's going right. to like music. They're going to like what you're giving. You know, right, it's right. gonna be strange as they're gonna support it. You know, you can't be just looking always at the inner circle, the inner environment, and, and everything. Like, surprised. like your family, you know, your real supporters. I'm not gonna say you won't have some, but mm -hmm. people around you that are watching you, mm -hmm. they not gonna really support you till they realize that you popular to support. Or, right. And which is sad, but a stranger who hears your music that likes it is gonna be a true fan. Because they don't know you to judge mm -hmm. you from whatever the past might have been. It's just mm -hmm. what, you know, what connected them to your song then. Yeah. So you can't get caught up in, and I encourage all artists to go outside of their city. Yeah, go for real. Of go outside the environment. And when you start realizing how many people really soaking you in, you're like, yeah, I, I, I should have been did this, you yeah. know. But just go out there and do it. Stop trying to focus on, like, 
these my G, my demographics go as far as my city like mm -hmm. you know nah nope. so oh <laughs> millions of people out there waiting that for part you. that part trying to looking to discover you that person already looking for you you just gotta let them find you right so so how first even how you even got involved you know in the entertainment industry to even want to do that like like where did he even start from what year this even came about like where the yeah. idea came from listen um i actually was just being the person that i am and um i had i had friends that were into music mm -hmm. and i was helping one of them and they was like well, will you be my manager half the people who i met well ain't no half all the people i managed asked me to manage them i didn't go out looking for artists I'm yeah. a nurse at heart. Like I, I, I did nursing for 15 years before I even got into entertainment. Yeah. And to be honest, I um, I got into a, a well, one day nursing got snatched from me like that. I um, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. It was a fight that ended up breaking out into a shootout, and mm. someone was shooting um shots when the guy who got jumped started shooting um shots from my car and i panicked and to make a long story short i wound up getting pulled over but when i got pulled over um i didn't i was listening to the officers but i also was trying to call my mom and trying to call somebody and let them know what had just happened mm -hmm. And they basically told me one more move and we're going to shoot. And they started shooting. So they shot my car 14 times. No. I wind up going to jail. And um, the officer that shot at my car, he tried to say that I hit him. But in all reality, that charge wound up getting dismissed. But it stopped me from working as a nurse at the time because I had a battery on the law enforcement officer. With the oh, plane. with that, with, with, before they dropped it, they they had that on enough on you, on you. Yes, so that notified Aka, and that pulled my nursing license right away. Um, and I thought it was the end of the world because I had been doing nursing. Well, I was a CNA from sixteen to the time I went to college, mm -hmm. and then um, I went to college and I was uh, working as a CNA even while I was in college, and then I graduated, of course, and I became a nurse, but. In that time period, I had been only working in the healthcare. Like I hadn't never did anything else. Right. So once I um once I got out, well, you know, like I took a break. And it's so funny, you gotta be careful what you pray for because I remember like a week before that happened, I was saying, like, Lord, I need a break. I was the evening supervisor mm. at a facility that had like over 130 beds. And I would work as a nurse sometimes. If the CNAs didn't show up, I would work as a CNA. And I was just like exhausted. And I had just hurt my back. And I was like, hey, I just, I just need a break. Yeah. Lord, I did not know that break was gonna be. <laughs> but anyway, I um I wound up going through the thing where I went to the boards, I asked for my nursing license back. They granted me that, but it was a time where I didn't have it. And um a friend of mine actually um had started we um she she was doing a makeup business and um we we partnered together because i had another side business that i do with um bedroom candy from candy spurs so we partnered together and we were basically um i was like a brand ambassador for her makeup mm -hmm. and then she asked me to be in one of her films she um she was asked to be in a movie and then she decided to create her own project. So she was asked to be in We All Ball. And then after she completed We All Ball, she decided to come up with a series called a series, a web series called I Know What I Want. And she asked me to be an actor in it. And that was my first time acting. Had never, you know, done anything like that. But of course I was excited. So right. I did it. And after that, um, that just opened up even more doors of um opportunity as far as entertainment now i've always had like a few celebrity friends so i was around music mm -hmm. um and entertainment but i i wasn't like hosting events i would just be like you know a guest yeah so um after that after i was in hers i um 
I came across a connection where I could have my own Roku, uh, my own network through Roku TV. So I decided to sign up with them and get a channel because not her, I was working with two film production companies and we weren't really sure where we were going to be putting our films out yet. Yeah. So it was like, let me just get this so we can at least be on TV. And then if someone sees it and like it, they might, you know, decide to pick it up. So um, I went through the process of getting the network. And since it's a, a channel that's 24 hours, seven days a week, I decided to start making my own content. And that's one reason why I came up with the show Cypher City. And that's artists um, basically ciphering, doing 16 bars to different random beats. Mm -hmm. Um with the cypher um in cypher city a lot of artists it's like maybe one percent of artists i would say know how to actually freestyle maybe 10 yeah. percent yeah. so a lot of them um wanted to perform and i'm like okay well even though this is supposed to be a cypher i'll start letting artists also perform their talent because maybe your yeah. kid isn't freestyling but you still have great songs yeah so i started doing um the showcases and then from there, more and more artists asked me to manage them. Yeah, that's what's up. I probably would have been in that one percent. My co-host, he a freestyler. He gonna do it all day. I need y'all on Cypher City. <laughs> yeah, he he gonna do it. He gonna do it. I'm, we, I'm gonna get one, him now. One show, I want y'all to come, and we can yeah. do it both. Y'all can do yeah. interviews with the artists, yeah. and I want y'all to feature on the TV show because it's hard to find them and um. I'm trying to connect with all the artists that would like to be on the platform. Yeah. Yeah. I say Jock gonna do it. He gonna like me. I gotta get my zone to even be like that. But I I don't know. Even write music, like I don't write stuff down. I'm more of like if I hear a beat straight off the dome. Yeah, if I'm if I'm I think I'm because I write music so much though, I'm a thinker. Like I'm a I'm a thinker. So it's like if I get in that zone where I black out the thinking, I'm gonna freestyle a bit. But even writing music, like I listen to the beat first. I start harmonizing or throwing words in there just to get my cadence. Yeah, get my cadence. When I got my cadence, I go back and plug in the words. Hey, yeah. you know. Yeah. But yeah, nah, Jow, they he been like that. So we we been tag teaming for a while, bro. Bro, really, you know, he like that. Um. So as a as a serial entrepreneur, you know, like what inspires you to just be like. All right, I'm gonna be my own boss. You know, I'm gonna go out here and really hit the ground with this. Was it during that time when you say the license uh, was was revoked at the time? A lot of that made me step into um, a lot of my businesses. Yeah. I can honestly say, even before, um, even before I got in trouble or you know, I through that mishap, mm -hmm. um, I had I was working as a nurse, but I also had another business yeah so i've always had i've always you know i've always known that if you want i, I want to be a millionaire really Had some emotions millionaire right yeah. you gotta have multiple streams of income mm -hmm. so um that was installed in me and i've always been the type if i see an opportunity and it makes sense it, it's gonna make some money and it makes sense yeah. i don't mind you know working to do whatever i need to do to make uh, execute it yeah. So, um, I think when, when it happened where, um, I wasn't working for someone else and taking up 16 hours of my day right. doing something else, I was able to then use my mind to see how I can work for myself mm -hmm. or, and another thing too. So this could never happen to me again, where I can lose everything like that. that yeah. So, um, after that happened, that didn't stop me from doing nursing. God gave me the idea to get on Craigslist and look for private duty cases. Mm -hmm. So I started doing private duty, working not as hard, making just as much money. Yeah. And then um, I I started a, a company basically just doing um, home health. And from there, I did it a little bit. Um, one of my clients passed away. And and then it just seemed like I, um, I started getting... I don't know. People, it's it's it just it, it was nothing but God. But people just started falling in place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it just yeah. started asking me like one of my um 
one of my friends that's a celebrity chef in Atlanta invited me to the BET Awards with him to basically be his assistant. And yeah. then I got to meet a lot of connections over there, as well as like I moved to Tallahassee and um, I was up there for a few months because I had a private duty client that was living in central Florida, but his daughter um, took a regional director job in Tallahassee. So that kind of put me in a place where I met I met someone that was able to take give me a job and travel me across the country. And I started, even though I was doing a job doing um, political work, like ballot initiative mm -hmm. work to try to get different um, different things on the ballot for, tw I think that was 2020. I, um, I started a weed channel where I yeah. was doing training reviews on YouTube. And that kind of helped me blow. Yeah. It helped me develop a lot of followers. And then um, from there, I realized that I like talking in front of the camera and I um, just, that's just how, yeah, yeah. That's how it all started. Now that's real. As soon as you said, he was like, I don't like, you know, at the moment you like, you feel like, all right, I don't really do cameras like that talking in the front of it. But then you find out, you know, like when you actually do it, like, oh, this is something I can do. You yeah. Know? And I no. felt, honestly, I felt like even though I was smoking weed, mm -hmm. I was people mm -hmm. because, you know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of the times when I would get on there and talk, I felt like I was, it, it, you know, I give, basically I give you what it tastes like, what it's supposed to smell like, what, right. it's, what you know, what it's supposed to look like. So there's no doubt because there's been so many things where people you know, alter things, you know, you, you just sometimes never know what you're getting, but if you can go and look it up and know how it's supposed to smell, how it's supposed mm -hmm. to look, how it's supposed to taste, how you're going to feel the side effects, then. No, you helping people for real without it, it might, <laughs> for real. Yeah. That's, that's what I started doing. Yeah. It really all, that really all started because I was in Massachusetts and I wasn't sure of the weed that I was getting. So mm. I was like all different kind of names. Like one time I heard the name fucking incredible. I looked it up. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm saying? What is this supposed to be crossed with? Um, and then from there, I was like, I want to, you know, give, give feedback. I was, you know, in a state where it was, um, legal. And then I, I wound up getting my medical marijuana card in Florida anyways. Yeah. But, um, so it was just like, you know, I felt like it was a hobby, but it was fun. And it also, you know, people going to be looking it up to see just like, you know, just like I was looking it up to see what it was. If they hear something that they never know, if you in a dispensary and you want to know a little bit more about it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Nah, for real. Shoot, you're doing something you like to do. It's some way to get people's attention off it, you know, yeah. for real. So from your experience, like just being an entrepreneur, like, what would you consider to be success, you know, overall as an entrepreneur? Like, what do you see? What do you see as success in it? And like, what is your overall, like your your goal, like your end goal? Like, what do you see yourself and what you do, like in a matter of months or years? Like, what you working on? Well, um, what's gonna make you satisfied? Like, I'm happy that like all this built up that this is why I wanted to be it. Mm -hmm. To me, success is just growth um it it won't necessarily always mean dollar signs mm -hmm. but you know if you set out a goal to accomplish something and you actually accomplish it that's success whether it's a small goal big goal you know even if you just see stepping stones that you're accomplishing to get to that big goal still consider yourself successful because so many yeah, people fact. have the thought and don't even take action or no. might take action and quit halfway, you know? So I think that no matter what the situation may be, you need to just keep, if, if you had that idea, God gave it to you for a reason. And when he gives us our ideas, even though this is a little bit off, but when he gives us ideas, we have to act on those ideas because if we don't, He's going to give that idea to somebody else and you might see them take off with it. And then don't try to go back and do it because, no, he gave it to you and you didn't do it. So yeah. anytime that you um you set out to do something, I feel like you should set out, do it, and finish strong. 
no Not matter ever. what it look like. Yeah, yeah. really. I was gonna say, um, like it's you know the feeling of like when you got the inspiration and you inspired to do something, then like you say, when you don't do it, then, then you try to go back, and then now it's like you're trying to force yourself to do it, like it ain't the same feeling no more. No, nope. Mm. But those those ideas or those things that you know we that are laid on us, yeah, are sometimes our biggest blessings if we act on it. Big fat. So during difficult times, what keeps Queen Airy motivated? I have to say, I have to keep God in all the equations. I have to keep God. He's the one who keeps me stable. He's mm-hmm. the one who, you know what I'm saying? When I when I might feel upset, down, depressed, defeated, um, I can I, I um I go to a church called Truth Reveal Ministries in Palm Bay, Florida, but you can um look us up and watch the stream yeah. eight AM or eleven AM on Sundays and seven PM on Wednesdays. And um my pastor, I feel like he helps me other than God, he helps the messages that he teaches help me stay grounded, help me stay on a path because I try to do I'm not going to, I was always raised up in church, but you know how, like, you can forget? Yeah. And you kind of, like, go off path. And it seems like every time I have or I tried and not even intentionally leave God out the equation, he'll bring me back to reality and realize how much I need him. So, yep. <laughs> so um, now I just try to know, You not even know, it's just like, I... I, I know that's my anchor. He's been there for me when nobody else was. Like, and that's that's what I use to help motivate me. I turn on some gospel music, mm-hmm. or you know what I'm saying, something like that to lift my spirits because the devil is busy, but he's not bigger than our God. Most definitely, night. Like- a lot of people got to keep that when you, you got to have a pure heart and a good spirit yeah. to keep you going forward, you know. Like, karma is real in a lot of situations, too. It's like with all the energy you put out to people or whatever you're doing, you're gonna get it back, you know, yeah. if it's good or it's bad. Yeah. Um, so how do you manage, like, you know, work life balance and being an entrepreneur at the same time? Like time management wise, too. One of my homegirls told me the other day, like, you're always so busy. And I'm like, I think a lot helps me because I don't have kids right now. So the artists that I manage are somewhat, I'm not going to say they like my kids, but I, I look at them somewhat like my children. So a lot of my time, I don't have a lot of free time. And the free time that I do have, Working for yourself, you're always working. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not a time that goes by that I could, I mean, in order for me to really like just untune from the world, I have to take my phone and just like put it somewhere and mm-hmm. turn it on silent. And mentally still within about an hour, I'm going to still want to look and see like what's going on because you never know. But um, I, it's, it's, it's just really... I um I try to I I don't know I'm I'm always on the clock <laughs> I'm always on the clock there's always something the only time I detach myself is when I feel like I absolutely need it other than that it's it's kind of it's just something that somebody has to take it they in my life right now because I haven't reached I wear a lot of hats so yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm the one behind the scenes doing damn near everything by myself. So I don't have a team quite yet. And when, I, you know, maybe in a year or so, I'll have a team that can, mm-hmm. you know, God will send me the people to plug in the pieces. But for right now, I'm I'm just so focused on elevating and reaching the goals that I have and become and developing financial freedom. I don't care about not having a day off. <laughs> Or, you know what I'm saying, being real busy. 
That's real. Is it gotta get done? That's that's yeah. already in the mind. Like, hey, it gotta happen. You know, I can't prolong a certain thing. Yeah. So, what even made you want to become a promoter as well, too? Like, what made you want to step behind and then be like, I'm the one that's gonna put this together, bring everybody together? Well, um, I've all okay. So, I used to always like. I've had a lot of like DJ friends and mm -hmm. people who I would help promote their events just, just off the strength, sharing flyers, telling people about it, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But um, just last year, I happened to um, run into a business that um, basically needed my help. Um, they were a new business starting. It's called Rhythm Kitchen in Titusville, Florida, Jamaican restaurant and lounge. Okay. And I um I went there to just go get some food one day. Mm -hmm. And just so happened when I went there, um I'm also a bartender. So I wanted <laughs> I wanted something to eat, but I wanted a drink and they didn't have a bartender. So I was like, um he was like, Well, do you know how to make your own drink? I was like, Yeah. And he was he was like, Well, make me one too. I want to see how it tastes. So I made him a drink, and um, from there, I started being his bartender. And then um, I was like, well, we got to make some days of the week. You know, we got to orchestrate some events where you have um, people coming, you know, throughout the week and different stuff like that. So yeah. I basically took on being one of the promoters for his club. And that's how um, a lot of it got started as me really for like promoting heavy because I almost every day of the week I'm promoting something yeah. um, for rhythm. But before that, it was just like different little events that I put together because I, I had DJ friends. Mm -hmm. So like being a promoter, like what strategies do you use to like uh, differentiate, differentiate yourself from other promoters? Like what do you feel makes Queen Aries stand out? from other promoters like your brand oh i can't hear you no nah, i can't hear you uh, uh try to uh try to pop back out and pop back in refresh it Nah. Yeah, y'all, y'all getting exclusive right now with Queen Aries, you know what I mean? Promoter, big promoter, a manager. Y'all doing things in Florida right now. You know what I mean, this ain't season four. Season four is over. We got season five in the works. But this the under this the underdog chronicles, man, right now. You dig what I'm saying? doing what we do over here man making it happen still you know what i mean i shut the season down i ain't taking no new people right now but i'm still making sure you know i get everybody on and on uh, give them their flowers man the people i reached out to you know gotta stand behind your word your word is everything you know but hope y'all on um, y'all still tapped in and, and getting these things done over here man Okay. okay we bet all right cool uh -huh. so um i feel like right now the only thing that makes me a little different than other, all the other um promoters in my area is i'm specializing um doing things for the local artists in my area mm -hmm. um other than that can you hear me yeah, I hate you. Okay. Other than that, there's not too much different. Um, yeah. I'm actually trying to connect with all the promoters around Central Florida to, well, in my area, really, Bavard County, so we can have a great nightlife because, like I said, this is kind of like a small town, not a whole mm -hmm. lot going on, but we have a lot of people here. Yeah. So, you know, um, when I first came into promoting different events, I basically went to all the promoters that I knew that promoted in the area and basically told them like, 
let's try to do different events. Host sometimes in Coco, host sometimes in Melbourne, mm-hmm. host sometimes in Titusville, just so we can have a lit, a lit nightlife. And um, that's what I've been trying to do since I stepped into it. Um, I would say like seven, eight months ago. Okay, that's what's up. Um, so what are your what we what would you say are your strengths? Uh, that you identify within yourself, and um, anything that you feel you need to work on that will help your brand out even more. Well, um, my strengths are I'm a leader, but I'm also a great team player. Mm. Um, I think just more experience will help my brand um maybe connecting to some higher like um talent search people or a and r's that are looking for talent with for artists um and that's something that i'm doing god is opening up doors where i i know i have at least two that i can connect with that um well maybe three about three but i'm looking for more um i think The only thing I can say is, and you got to love me, but I have a zero tolerance for bullshit. <laughs> yeah, um, for real. <laughs> I've been asking God to help me. Like, you know, I know I'm hum- more humble than what I used to be, yeah. but I, um, I can use some work cause I can't, I can go off sometimes, yeah. but at least it's, it's for a college, though. Right. You know, it ain't, just, yeah, it ain't nobody be- ain't looking crazy. Why? Why is it going crazy over there? Y'all know what's going on. Yeah, for real. <laughs> but other than that, um, yeah, like um, I'm a great person to get to know. I'm easy to deal with. Um, very resourceful. Please I don't feel scared to reach out. If you know anybody that's an artist or if you're an artist yourself um, or if you're an actor, model, I also write um, films, please reach out. I can always, even if I can't use you now, I can always use you later. Mm -hmm. Um, These are things, you know, just I'm I'm a natural person. I'm, I'm very, very down to earth, real, as real as it can get. So tap in. Oh, I got a question too. So being that you are writing with movies, you know, like how long you how long would it take to write like a short film type of vibe, you know, like a little short film? It takes minimum time. I mean, yeah. honestly, once we get your act, your your um outline out mm-hmm. and your act one, two, and three mm-hmm. with the points of what you want to happen in act one, two, and mm-hmm. three writing becomes simple see that's yeah we definitely we definitely got to talk about that because me and Ja trying to uh write like a little a short film or you know I, us growing up in orlando and yeah. stuff like that so and it's like we from the same area too so yeah. it's like it's crazy because we knew each other before we ran back into each other again like that that's what we be talking about all the time like man you was you was there when i was there we just ain't mix with each other no. yeah so it's like it's interesting though, you know. I'm trying to make it like to like a somewhat mix the music in to in the situation, but just coming up, we come up in and yeah, uh, it's kind of telling both our sides, and then we just till we kind of mix together and up to what we doing now, you know. Okay, so, I would love yeah. to be a part of it. Just um, let me know when y'all ready so we can start the outline. I'll get the full you know synopsis of what you guys want to go right. on. Of course, I'll add to it. If you need me to, and we just film it. A short yeah. film is one of the easier ones, so yeah. we um we could get that done within a week or two, probably yeah, not that gonna, long. Yeah, I'm a, I'm gonna chop it up with him. But I was like, we was I was sitting there like, man, you know, bro, we could literally write a script about all of this, man. Like he was like, yeah, for real. And that idea <laughs> is definitely something you got to not yeah. you got it for a reason. Yeah, nah, it's definitely him. Yeah. Um. So, as an entrepreneur, artist, or if anybody doing anything, how important is the networking? It's so important. Your network, I mean, your network is your network. 
you cannot go to events and not conversate and talk to people because you She's never right. know who's who or you. who might have the same like mind as you and can help be a piece to your puzzle. I mean, I'm they call me the networking queen because I'm <laughs> I'm gonna go and introduce myself and tell you who I am. Yeah. Whether you want to hear it or not. And most people don't reject you. So don't be scared. Do not be scared. Mm -hmm. And if they do, forget them. Go to the next. <laughs> There's so many more people. Yeah, it's like ain't nobody. What's the worst they can do? Say no. Uh, right. I'm good. All right. Well, I'm not and no. that's just, I mean it's part of the game. You kill them with have a blessed day there, because you ain't do nothing to them. They might just be miserable or something going on in their life. And they might need to have a blessed day. Mm -hmm. So, all right, with the promoting and everything, with your event, take us back to the time with your first event. Like, what was that like for you? Like, the first event for artists. Like, what was the vibe? Like, you know, what was your expectations that night? Like, what was the goal you was trying to look for out of it? Like, you know, what was the overall feeling? It was such a great vibe. Um, our first one was um, November 27th, I want to say, in mm -hmm. Winter Haven at Hairball Studio. Shout out to Hairball Studio for hosting the event. It was amazing. Um, she had a group of artists. I, I don't know how many. Maybe I'll say like six. Yeah. And I had got a party bus and took over about eight of the artists from Bavard County over to her studio because she has a, like a multiple room studio. And, yeah. Um, we did a cypher there and um, some of her artists showcased and that's how I kind of started doing the cypher with the showcase. And um, it was just a great vibe. Everybody had a good time. Um, and it was small because we were in the studio and I did another one in um, Cocoa, Florida, January 1st at Moreno's. And that was a great vibe as well. And then I just shot the last one I did for Cypher City episode three mm -hmm. um, in Titusville, Florida. And that one was the biggest one that we've had. So Yeah, I was about to ask you about that. Which one was the most, that gave you that feeling like, yeah. It, it's, it's a, Moreno's capacity was like 150, mm -hmm. but we didn't even have 150. I think because a lot was going on on New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. But um, the club that I went, that we just had it at on um, 714 last Friday was at Rhythm. It can hold up to 700 people standing. So yeah. um, it, it's a huge venue and it was packed. So, uh, well, it, it was, well, I'm not going to say max to capacity, yeah. but it you was. You walk in there, it like, man, crowd. who in there? Yeah. yeah. It was a uh -huh. great crowd. I think all the artists enjoyed it. Um, shout out to Ready Red and Mad Ills and Jers for helping host the event, um, as well as all the artists that came to Who's On Goals. They all did great. Um, j Hot Music was one of the special panelists that picked one of the artists to go to Snap Season, and um, that was dope as well. The next day, just going to, oh, you know, he supported me, so I supported him mm -hmm. and collab. It was just, it was just amazing. Um, I think every time people, people might be scared to come to showcases, yeah. but I would honestly say actually come out and actually come and see one and support the artist because you'll be surprised and you never know which one in that showcase is going to be the next to blow because they definitely be stars. It's never, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for real. So it's like that. It's a it's a great vibe. If you haven't already checked out one, make sure you check out one in your area, and you'll be surprised how much talent is right there. I like how you say that everybody's a star. Like that's how we look at it over here on this platform. Everybody yeah. we bring on, you got emotion. You a star already. You feel me? Yeah. We just getting a million dollar story. You know, yeah. from, you know from your eyes. You feel me? The stuff that you just. You just said that I wouldn't never thought, you know, the police going through all that. Like somebody experienced that. That's a whole, that takes a lot. Like that's a I'm total. You you. God got me here for a reason. <laughs> and then that's why I'm like in my head when you said they shot wild uncontrollably 14 shots. And that's just wild. Eight to the past. 
side, one up, one straight up the back, three on the um, three to my driver side, and a few in my back driver tire. I I I call it for. <laughs> yeah, they try. Yeah, yeah but, that's right, but God kept me here for a reason, and that's why my every day my prayer is for Him to use me for His purpose mm -hmm. because. I know I'm here serving a purpose for him. Most definitely. So what are some of your most memorable experiences you had at these events, you know, you put together? I think um, just, you know, watching the artists grow. Like maybe their first time they might not have been as good. And then you just see them progressing and progressing like some of them might not even used to know how to freestyle. Now they mm -hmm. freestyling. Like just seeing the growth. Um, and I can't, I, I just like for everybody to have a great time. So, you know, um, when they're, you know, when we're there and we're doing it and they're happy, that just makes me happy because, you know, they, they, they really just, you know, they go to the studio they spend a couple hundred dollars to create mm -hmm. a song. For real. At least give them a platform to where they can test that song out and see if it's viable. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Or how the crowd reacts to it. Um, and they, you know, my joy is just comes from making them have, you know, have this opportunity. And that's major. You know, like you say in the area you at, you know, to 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 make that happen. Yeah. Um, Hold on, shout out to Carmen the Goddess. She just commented on her, you know. Yeah, hey, yeah, all star. Uh huh. But yeah, that's that's major for artists. Like, even though you know, I come from Orlando in my city, we got it's a city, you feel me? But they still having the same conversation. It don't even really matter about the numbers, it's what you're doing, you know, to, to make it work. You know, right. you can have all the people with everybody on they own type of time or stuck on individuality. You're just gonna have a whole bunch of hooping and hollering for years, and the people just gonna, you know, you gotta. You, that's when it's like, as an artist, it's like, man, I gotta grow outside of it because folk just ride with people just for this reason. They might not even be a hot artist for real like that, you know. No right. shade to everybody art, but it's like you can tell who really fully investing into it or who just doing it just because. For fun. Yeah, but they each is on with that, but um, yeah. I try to take them all serious. I try to tell them yeah. serious. If you're doing something, mm -hmm. you need to be taking it serious. Don't half ass with nothing that you do. Mm -hmm. Take it serious because if not, just don't do it. Just yeah. don't. If you, I mean, I'm not going to say that you, because because you never know where it might go. Right. You yeah. Stuff changes too. It's... If you don't give a hundred to it, how you expect to get a hundred back? Mm hmm. So, like, what advice would you give to those who are looking to get into the business, you know, as a promoter or a manager for artists? Like, what's some things they need to know? As far as, um, as far as an artist, go for it. Go for it. Go, you know, if you have, if you feel like you have a gift and um, you, you're not sure how it's going to go, find you a music engineer. If you don't know one, contact me and I'll try to help you find a music engineer or someone in your area. It doesn't have to be Florida either, wherever you are. Because yeah. I know people, New York, Atlanta, LA, like all the major cities, um, I know someone. So if you are, um, you know, looking for some direction, I would say reach out to someone that is already in the field and try it because you never know you know what i'm saying drop it and see how many people gonna listen you might have strangers pick it up also yeah. put promotion behind your music yeah that too created and don't have no type of promotion behind it yeah. have a marketing um plan and work it um as far as a promoter try it it's not i mean i i would say nothing should stop you if mm -hmm. obviously if you have that idea and you have a way of executing that plan do it because the only thing that um that would give you like 
the devil is the only one who would stop you or hinder you or want to procrastinate you or or stagnate you no don't don't you let fear stop you from doing anything for real that's not from god yeah that fear have a lot of people talking themselves out of something before it even happened or looking for the worst already and i ain't even got the way they Right. Yeah, it's human, you feel me? Okay. But so, at some point, you got to be like, right, man, like, this is a good Id- opportunity, a good idea. Just go with it. Right. You know? right. So who has been some of the dopest artists you come across since you've been hosting these events? And what made them stand out to you? So I already told you Karma shot me mm-hmm. at the pool party. Um, and she still continues to shock me. Shout out to Karma the Goddess. I see your growth. Um, love. I would say Golden B. She's the hardest R&B rapper or uh, R&B female artist I feel in our area. Her um, music is very viable. Viable. If you haven't already heard Chose Me, I recommend you going to stream Chose Me. Um, I would say I got so many. Um, shout out to KT Drake. I see his growth. Uh, he just dropped a new album called Leveled Up. Mm-hmm. And um, I love him to death. We have CJ the God. We have, um, let me see, J Witt, um, Oteo321, um, Rolling Sticks. I ain't say nothing about Rolling. Rolling, Rolling is one of the, She's the main reason I even started doing this show. For real? She is one of the hardest rappers in our area. And she's in a wheelchair. And she has um um she has a, a disorder, I think, in her spine. I wanna say, I don't wanna say it wrong. All right, cerebral cerebral palsy. No. I wanna say it's cerebral palsy, but right. I'm not one hundred percent sure. So don't kill me if I'm saying it wrong, sticks. But she's wheelchair bound and she don't let it stop. Yeah, her. That that's that's inspiration right there. Like you see people going to do something, like I say, that don't stop nothing. You feel me? Like that don't stop nothing. You know, so that's why it's like when people got they can get up and breathe, uh walk around with two feet and got all their limbs and stuff. It's like there's no excuse for nothing, you know. Mm-hmm. For real. Right. So those um those are a few of the ones in my area that I feel are rising stars that are, are going to be taking off soon. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Dola. Like, I seen him in a couple oh, of those. Yeah. 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 Dola, yeah. Dola, Yeah, I seen him on. Did he do an interview with y'all? Yeah, yeah. He locked in with her. Yeah. He never came back and did it? Uh, the interview, yeah, yeah, like this. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We locked in probably like a couple episodes ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. It's so many of them, though. So, a shot to everybody. If you've been a part yeah, of her platform, everybody and, in Brevard yeah. County, just know we next up already. So, what do you, what does Queen Aries manifest for herself and her brand? Like, what do you claim for yourself? Like, where, where, where you want this to go? Well, yeah, where it's headed. I ain't gonna say where you want it to. But. Um, I just want to. Basically, um, I manifest that I'm going to help the artists that I already manage as well as other artists that touch my platform reach their fullest potential. Um, If they want to get a record deal, I'm trying to connect with different record deals, whether it's just for one project or, Mm -hmm. you know, long term. Um, Just helping them gain the exposure and and take off. I want to see some of the artists on my platform be celebrity artists within the next year. Yeah. Now, I can see there, too, because, like I say, they got somebody, you know, that's really, because, you know, a lot of people say they this and that, but don't don't follow up behind it. Right. You know, you got your hands tied in a whole lot of motion. And still able to just be like, all right, I'm gonna come through this, you know, with this for y'all. I'm still gonna, you know, follow through with this and still give your energy to other everything else. 
You know, that shows somebody really got a passion to love the, you know, what they do, especially, uh, you know, how they say it's kind of like what we do when we doing stuff, we helping other people out in a lot of things. Like what ways can you service people, whether it's a product or what ways is like we all helping each other. You know, right. people really look at it as like we helping each other, like, mm -hmm. you know, build. So any upcoming events or anything in the works you would like to share with the people? So um, we have a rap battle coming 818. Uh -oh. Any freestyle artist, I don't care if you're not in County. 818 what? At Rhythm Kitchen and Lounge yeah. in Titusville, Florida. There will be a cash prize. So any artist that hears this and might be interested in being in the rap battle with a freestyle um, challenge or even performing on a platform, tap in. Mm -hmm. Um. I, uh, we also have another snap season coming with J-Hive Music, Classic Weekend, and Papa's Old Management will be in the building. Scouting for talent. So, um, y'all, if y'all haven't already tapped into snap season or heard about snap season, y'all um, look up J-Hive Music and tap into snap season. Mm -hmm. um, I have... So you got that script coming in? Yes. Well... Yeah. We're, um, I have, I, we got a few films coming for 2024. Mm -hmm. Be on the lookout. I'll be, um, in lock your goddamn door. <laughs> hey, for real. It's a horror film, <laughs> it's a horror film that I'm playing, uh, um, a captain of the yeah. squad to find the killers. Um, That's there's hard. another movie I'm going to be writing called, um, Vanished. That's going to be filmed here shortly. Um, and today I just was asked to join a project. I'm not going to speak on it yeah. because we haven't actually got the name of the movie yet. And we still working on the outline, but yeah, they're going to find that. They yes, but that. We, have, we had a very, very successful business meet today and shout out to, um, Lil 4 L records legend and everybody else that's going to be a part of that collab um so yeah that that's it as well as it's a few things that i don't even know that that are probably mm -hmm. well, i kind of know but i i haven't sealed the deal on but y'all just know 2024 gonna be up i'm launching my channel on roku january 2024 so be on the lookout for dream tv entertainment Mm -hmm. Um, and that's it. Now, when I'm gonna get you on the show? Hey, we ready whenever. Uh, me and Zai, me and Zai make it happen. You think you could come August the 18th? Uh, August, okay. August gonna be kind of. I got some personal. That's why I kind of shut down season four. But uh, okay. yeah, we gonna we gonna wrap. Those I'll moments. keep you updated. I'm gonna try to do um one once a month i know yeah. the one in september if it if it goes through that's going to be um dope goddess versus sim bills mm -hmm. new york fashion week in new york um that's like the september the 7th through the 13th if that mm -hmm. actually goes through um and i'm also planning a showcase in new york for artists um and they're going to be I'm collabing with um, French Montana and his crew to do a show there um, for the hip hop anniversary this yeah, year. Yeah, that 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's hard. Um, but yeah, it was, I, like I said, I'm going to talk to Jalo because he already, you know, he, he already done. I'm like, man, you got to go hold it down for the underdog. But I know he going he gonna to like that. You know, yeah. I told him, I said, man, bro. I was like, he was saying, man, I feel like, bro, I got to get out a little more, man. I got to, you know, we'd be releasing music, like, man, I got to get out. I said, man, yeah, yo, because I'm in Atlanta running around and stuff like that, you know, but I was just like, we collab, we link up and do it. But I said, man, bro, you got to hit the ground. Mm -hmm. Like, just go out there and just, you know, you know you dope as an artist already, bro. And we ain't questioning nothing about that. Just get out there, you know, just, just give it to the people, man. Yeah. Oh. Um, 
And he's you say he's in Atlanta and you're in Orlando. I'm nah, I'm in Atlanta, he in Orlando. Then. Okay. Uh-huh. So so when yeah. we come out there, I gotta tap in with you, Chris. Yeah. We were planning on trying to do something in um Atlanta too. I don't have a date yeah. yet. Yeah, I don't know. That's why when Twan don't came up, he was like, "Man, I pulled. I think I pulled up from Donna sending me out there, and then it just the network just linked from there. Twan reached yeah. out to us, and you know, it's just been a little circle going. Cool. But uh, now I respect it because you know you're like, bro, it, it, you know, I see what y'all doing and what y'all doing. He said, it's just like the Apex thing, he like, man, if he said everybody in that room, everybody was doing something, everybody got something going on. Yeah, I still, yeah, them the type of room I like to be like, in, you know, okay. for real. We all like it's like barter, we all exchange and info and just everything with each other, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, any special shout outs or recognition you would like to give to those who've been in your corner along this journey? Um, so. I want to say um, shout out to Rhythm Kitchen, the owner, Ernie. He's like my shout partner when it comes down to, you know, making sure everything goes right for the showcases. I really, really appreciate him. Um, shout out to all the promoters in Bavaria County that has, you know, shared my, my stuff or, you know what I'm saying, told the artists. I really appreciate you guys. Um Shout out to the artists that I manage. Like I said, Carmen the Goddess, Golden B. Shout out to them. Uh, YLN, KT, Rolling Sticks, Mr. Indeed, Scar, SOB, um, Day Day, Lil J from the NOLA. I appreciate you guys. I see y'all working hard. Continue the hard work. It will not go in vain. Um, and shout out to my county. Shout out to my county for just being mm-hmm. being there. You know, um, I appreciate y'all coming out to the last event. No face did not go unrecognized. I really appreciate y'all. And just stick with us; it's gonna grow. Yeah, you got a team, though. That I, I, shout out, shout out to the city of Bavard, though, for real, because for your city to be willing to participate and just you know everybody understand the mission. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that's real. That's real support. That's a real city. You know, yeah. start stuff like that. You know, people if people on the outside gonna start, they already gonna see what's going on too. You know, that might that's gonna be influential to other cities, you know, because like I say, other cities, you know, is it, different, you know, as far as everybody coming together, and that's what need to happen to win. Like that's the simplest form, you know. Right. But uh Hey, it was definitely an honor to have you on here, Queen, you know. Yes, thank you. Enjoyed it. Get this million dollar store and everything like that, you know. Wish you nothing but success. We already know you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I wish you blessings on top of blessings as well. Yeah, we respect the motion and everything going on. So it's a must, you know, we had to get you on here to lay this out to inspire you know and uplift others you know at the same time you know get your flowers and everything thank you so much keen i salute you for doing what you do i really really appreciate it giving everybody like a platform to come and just Mm -hmm. tell their story don't have a timeline on it no that's that's nothing but love yeah that's that's all that's really the whole you know the foundation i understand the problem like i used to be like man i don't like that this and that about the coach and all that type of stuff but i was like i'm on the one like man if you got a problem or issue with some be the cause to be one of the reasons to fix it or repair it put a band-aid right. on it right. don't just keep digging the hole in the pipe and yeah digging the hole in the pipe now you can't fix it for real like now nah, we're gonna wrap this up and bandage it you know and hopefully what we doing you know we seen a couple people you know kind of give us a flowers and tell us like we inspired them in a way, so yeah. I don't know. We kind of know we, we doing the thing, you know, in the right direction. But I done built a new passive for just you know with people, you know, like mm-hmm. I ain't never feel like I'll be in the front of the camera doing this, <laughs> and you know, but I'm just it's like, your calling. 
Yeah, I just grew a passion for it, you know, the just simple format. Like, man, what you going, what you got going on? Like, you ain't got to be the most known. You can be somebody who has some emotions, just start whatever, wherever you at. Like, we're going to get that story, you know, because it's a lot of other people out there that then, you know, they need inspiration to where it's like, man, I'm stuck at X, Y, and Z. They might have been where you was at before, been through something else, but they can look at your story and be like, well, if she made it through that or he made it through that, I know I can get somewhere, you know? Right, right. So, but we yeah. definitely, definitely yeah. appreciate you coming on, Queen. Before we get you out of here, though, uh, last but not least, like, what does the word underdog mean to you? Or when you hear the word underdog? So when I hear the word underdog, it reminds me of someone that might not be on the front of the scene or you know what I'm saying? In the front, like actually being uh, the spotlight being put on them, but they're the ones who are maybe behind the scenes getting things done. You know what I'm saying? Um, making sure that even, even though they might not be on the path, like, you know, in the front or whatever, they're on the path that they need to be to get what they need to get done. That's real. Y'all heard it. Right here with Queen Airy, the underdog chronicles, you feel me? When there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. I mean, make sure y'all go on and follow on Instagram, Queen underscore Airy underscore three two one. This was the underdog chronicles. I appreciate you, Queen, coming on. We're gonna get together soon and put it together. Yes, I'm gonna um, um even if we have to do the cipher at um Atlanta. Yeah. I'm with whatever, with everything, you know, and opportunity, you know, we're gonna we're gonna make it happen. So okay. appreciate you, Queen. Appreciate you too. Enjoy the rest you. of your night. Stones around my neck. Whoa. If you pay attention, I teach you how to earn respect. I walk around with a tag like a mad at the rail. People do any damn thing for a chat. So, what if you got signed labels? Throw them on the shelf. No. I don't ask for hell. I just go within myself. Hard times, I prevail. I bust up by myself. I let my nuts hang. Cause they don't got no curfew. Uh. Throw them out. On my teeth, I got carrots. Open up her mouth and she got vocal sound like Janet. Marble on the floors, but the kitchen chemical.